Gamelan is traditional Indonesian music originating from islands of Java and Bali. It is performed in religious practices and for entertainment. Why it is interesting from a musical theory standpoint? I think because the tuning of Gamelan is vastly different from a Western chromatic scale. There are two tuning systems in Gamelan, Slendro and Pelag. If we compare them with chromatic scale that we use, we can see that there is no familiar intervals, no fifth, no thirds, and even the octave is a bit off. Because of that, there is no familiar scales, chords, and chord progressions. So there is no point for analyzing gamelan with Western music theory. This really makes gamelan unique, and this tradition emerged naturally, just like the Western. So what led Indonesians to pick those intervals for their music and not the ones that we use? And do we have anything to learn from it? I will attempt to answer those questions in this video. Let's go. Firstly, there are two varieties of gamelan, Javanese and Balinese. They do sound different as typical set of instruments is slightly different, and Balinese gamelan has specific tuning peculiarities. But to keep things simpler, I'm going to talk only about Javanese gamelan, as most of things should be common between both varieties. So let's get familiar with typical Javanese gamelan instruments. Those who are familiar with that can skip that part. Four groups of instruments can be identified. Metallophones, gongs, percussion, and melodic instruments. Let's go through them. And before we start, I want to apologize if I pronounce anything in the wrong way. First metallophone is called saron, and it consists of seven bronze bars on top of resonating frame. It comes in three sizes that cover different registers. It plays major role in gamelan as it plays the main melody of the piece. Next metallophone is called Genda. It has a different shape of bronze bars than Saron, so it has a different timbre. It consists of 10 to 14 bronze bars that are suspended by rods over tuned resonators made from bamboo or metal. The lower pitched version of Genda is called Slantham. Another instrument is called gambang. It is a xylophone, not a metallophone, as bars are made of wood and it covers wide register of several octaves. That does it with metallophones. Another very important set of instruments in gamelan are gongs. The first one I will mention plays a major role in gamelan and it is called bunang. It is a collection of tuned horizontally laid gongs that go in two rows and are tuned asymmetrically. It also comes in different sizes to cover different registers. It plays decorative melody on top of the main one. Next instrument is Ketuk Kempion. Gongs in gamelan play a very important role in the structure of music. They mark off cyclical time intervals that divide the composition. That is called colotomy. Smaller gongs, like Kethuk Kempiang, keep the regular beat of music. The larger gongs, like Gong Kenong, group together these hits into larger groupings, playing once per each grouping. Kenong is the largest laid gong that has individual stand for each gong, but it is smaller than some hanging gongs. Gamelan has a large variety of hanging gongs that used to indicate the structure of composition. The collection of smaller hanging gongs is called Kempu, and the largest gong is Gong Agang. It represents the longest time cycle in composition, and it is actually the most important instrument in Gamelan ensemble. As due to mythology surrounding Gamelan tradition, it is considered sacred. Gamelan also uses percussion instruments. Typical for Javanese gamelan is two-headed drum kendang. It is very important as its player sets the rhythm of the music piece. It also plays the role of the beat for dancing performance that is accompanied by gamelan music. And the last group of instruments plays melodic role. It is suling, the flute-like instrument. Rebab, bowed two-string instrument. and sitter, a harp-like instrument. 
Also, some Gamble and pieces implement thinning. Okay, so now we are familiar with typical gamelan instruments. Let's see how they are tuned. Gamelan metallophones and gongs are tuned into two stages. First one is rough tuning that is done in furnace by giving gongs and plates rough shape. And then it is fine tuned by filing parts of plates and gongs. That filing affects both the note and timbre as pitch and amplitude of some overtones can be controlled, though within limits. First instrument to be tuned is Genda, then the rest of instruments are tuned to it. Once tuned, instruments stay in tune for decades until time and corrosion will shift tuning too far and it will require retuning. Though at that point it is impossible to restore the original tuning, so the ensemble will sound different. The notes in gamelan are usually referred to as numbers. In the low register around 180 Hz, the tuning for Slendro and Paylog will look something like that. Not a single instrument can be tuned to both those systems at once. So the instruments really come in sets, one for each tuning. So Saron from Slendra set cannot be played in Paylog Ensemble. Going up to the middle register in the same gamelan we see that tuning shifts, and quite noticeably, up to 30 cents. In higher register, again, the tuning is slightly shifted. That is quite unusual as Western tuning is uniform in all registers. For simplicity, from now on I will use averaged values for notes in Slendro and Paylog. We see that Slendra is dividing an octave evenly, and thus it is close to 5-tone equal temperament. And Pelic is non-equally tempered tuning, and is not well approximated with notes from chromatic scale. But deviations of tuning with register is not the whole story. Gamelan masters don't use tuning forks but rely on their memory, and may use famous Gamelan as a reference for making tuning decisions. Therefore, tuning differs between different ensembles. Here are values for average tunings for two different gamelan ensembles taken from the book Tuning Timbre Spectrum Scale, and third tuning I measured myself using free sample library for contact from Casada Musica. Link in the description. We see that even though there are definitely common features, exact values for pitches are different for different ensembles. Therefore, same music piece will sound different if played with different gamelan ensemble. You can check this out yourself on this site, Link in the description, it has several recordings of the same piece played on several Balinese gamelan ensembles. Another thing that makes gamelan instruments unique apart from tuning is their timbre or spectrum that they produce. To understand the difference, let's start with common western musical body, vibrating string. Just by itself, string does not produce musical tone, but sounds more like a noise. And the spectrum contains all the frequencies in certain interval, roughly with the same amplitude. To produce musical tone, we have to apply tension. So let's put it into my guitar. Now the string is locked tight in the bridge here and in the nut here. So this is the length of the string that is vibrating. When we plug the string, we give it energy to start vibrating. And at first few moments, it vibrates at almost all frequencies. But very quickly, vibrations at most of frequencies lose their energy. This happens because in order to vibrate at those frequencies, the string have to move up and down at the ends, which are held by the bridge and the nut of the guitar. So the string fights the body of the guitar and of course loses. The result is that those frequencies get attenuated very quickly. The frequencies at which a string vibrates sustainably are called modes of vibration and are such that half period of the vibration fits exactly inside the length of the string. Such frequencies are fundamental, exact numerical value depends on the length of the string and tension. Second harmonic with twice the frequency, third with three times the frequency, and so on. Such spectrum in which partials are whole number multiples of fundamental frequency is called harmonic spectrum. Different situation happens with metal plates in gamelan metallophones. In this picture of Genda, you can see that the plates are suspended by the cables in two points, here and here. That means that the ends of the plates are free to vibrate however they want. Such vibrations are much more complicated and depend on exact shape of the bar. As an example, here are possible modes of vibration for free ideal rectangular plate. Frequencies of those modes are not necessarily whole number multiples of fundamental. Indeed, if we plot the spectrum of a single note played on Genda from Casada Musical Library, 
we get the following spectrum. Spectrum that does not follow harmonic series as it has non-integer ratios to fundamental. Such spectrum is called inharmonic. With harmonic instruments, ratio of partial frequency to fundamental does not change much and stays close to harmonic series. But in gamelan, spectrum of each node in each register are noticeably different. To find typical spectrum of a gamelan instrument, let's limit ourselves to middle register and measure spectrum of every note in the octave for Saron. We see that indeed there is a variation in spectrum of notes, but some partials can be identified as close enough. Let's take such partials and average their ratios. This way we find typical Saron spectrum. In my previous video, Can Octave Sound Dissonant? I explained how spectrum of a single note is related to the tuning and scales used in Western music. Spectrum of metallophones in gamelan do not follow harmonic series, but the same process that relate harmonic series to Western tuning works in gamelan, but leads to slender and pellet. First, let me briefly explain what is dissonance curve. One of psychophysiological contributions to musical dissonance comes from beating of nearby partials of a sound. Beating is pulsating sound that happens when two sine waves of close frequencies sound simultaneously. Effect of beating on our perception of dissonance can be experimentally measured by asking group of participants to rate how dissonant different pairs of sine waves sound. That was done in 1965 and published in the article Tonal Consonance and Critical Bandwidth by Plomp and Leveled. They obtained the following result. This graph represents the sweep of two sine waves and corresponding value of sensory dissonance from 0 to 1. Because tones of conventional musical instruments like guitar consist of many individual sine waves forming harmonic series, we can use Plomp and Level's result to calculate the analogous graph but for harmonic spectrums. One spectrum will be static and another will sweep all frequencies in the span of one octave while with some contributions to dissonance from every pair of sine waves in both spectrums. And we will get this graph, that has many dips in dissonance. They happen in places where partials of a sound coincide, thus reducing overall dissonance and mark the notes of just intonation. Just intonation is somewhat impractical tuning system, and today we use 12-tone equal temperament, that sacrifice purity of harmony of just intonation, but simplifies the life of a musician a great deal. We can see that not every note falls perfectly on the deep in dissonance curve. Some notes do not have corresponding deep at all. So we should expect some imperfections, as many things apart from beating alone can affect how we tune our instruments. Consider dissonance curves as rough indication to where you want to place notes to get useful tuning. Obviously, form of dissonance curve depends on frequencies and amplitudes of partials in spectrum. If we use only two first partials of harmonic spectrum, the dissonance curve will have dips only at unison and the octave. Going to three partials, we get the dip at perfect fifth, then perfect fourth, and so on. At eight partials, dips that do not correspond to any particular note from chromatic scale start to appear. Though we don't really distinguish such high partials that well, so there is no point to go any further. Changing the amplitudes of partials in spectrums will change how deep the dips are, but won't change their place in frequency. Now we can apply the same approach of drawing dissonance curves to see if it works with gamelan. We have our typical spectrums for Saron, Genda, and Bunang from Casada Musica Contact Library. When calculating dissonance curves, we will use them as static spectrum. And as sweeping spectrum, we will use four first partials of harmonic spectrum. That is so because melodic instruments in gamelan, like sulin, rebab, and sitter, and voice, have harmonic spectrum, and they have to harmonize with metallophones. So this is what we get for Saron tuned to Slendra. We can clearly see that dissonance curve correlates very well with actual Slendra tuning this particular gamelan is tuned to. Same thing can be done for Genda and Bunang. Different instruments give different dissonance curves, but with dips roughly at the same place. Averaging between all dissonance curves, we clearly see that it corresponds well to the notes of slender tuning. Same thing can be done for instruments tuned to Pelloc, where we see that there is the same correlation. 
I believe we can conclude that the same objective mechanisms of relation of spectrum and tuning that gave us our scales work with gamelan. But because of different choice of instruments, it forced people of Indonesia to get to completely different set of pitches that is incompatible with Western music theory and Western instruments. The tuning masters tune gamelan like they hear, to their liking. They have control over the pitch and amplitude of some partials, and also they rely on their memory of what gamelan should sound like. So there are many contributions to the choice of exact tuning. Same thing was true in the West before standardization to 12-tone equal temperament. There was a big diversity of tunings, each with their own flavor. And composers choose certain tonalities for their pieces because different tonalities actually sounded different. However, apart from taste, there is an objective contribution to dissonance, to which tuning gravitates, as it maps places where partials of a sound coincide, and therefore notes start to harmonize with each other, and the whole becomes greater than the sum of its parts. Globalization got to Indonesia and especially to Bali, where gamelan takes in influences from Western music. I think one of the influences that the West can take from gamelan is the use of unique inharmonic timbres tuned to related tunings, thus enriching the harmonic vocabulary in that way. If you like this video, you may find my video Can Octave Sound Dissonant also interesting. Many thanks to the channels from which I took videos with demonstration of gamelan instruments, as I don't have access to them myself. I'll leave links to them in the description. And special thanks to William Sitharis, that came up with the method of dissonance curves and described it in his book Tuning Timber Spectrum Scale. That book inspires me a lot. You should check it out if you, were, if, if you want more info on the topic. It is a great read. Thank you for watching. Ask a question in comments, like, subscribe, support on Bandcamp, and until next time.